Red Door, Route 3, and Caliber. Let's go to the show. This magazine's missing five rounds from the next thing in the case. I guess if you were shot somewhere else. That corroborates our witness's story about the stop. So I guess this isn't our primary crime scene. Blood and hair. Something definitely went on in the back of this car. I want to see what happened up front with this onboard camera. This tape plays on a loop. It's activated when you hit the light bars. You might be able to get something out there. Our victim, Officer Dan Caulfield, in a Ford traffic stop last night, not killing the girl. You want to start with the most recent and work backward? I don't know why I called this guy out. Will you check the MGT lock? Now there's no mobile data terminal entry corresponding with this timestamp. You never locked the stop, that's strange. It's worse than strange. It's the type of thing that gets your days off.
wrote the lyrics to his song, A Change Is Gonna Come, it was very direct and to the point. With some changes to it, the song was still digestible. In the year 2019, Black folks continue to go through the change rather than direct the change. A community activist named Talik Ibn Rock has made an appeal similar to what Sam Cooke was asking for, a change. It said that the meek shall inherit the earth. We ask when. When will the landlords give the meek a free lease? Mr. Ebermott is humbly asking for the state of Mississippi. This is Dusty Basement Studios, and we approve of this message. Turn off at 2220. Sleep timer set for 2220. The Mississippi campaign represents everything that you claim that you want. The beginning of an all-black independent nation. The ability to control your own resources. Your politics, the law. Be able to do your own thing for a change. Create an, an economy. Create and produce goods that Africa or anybody on the planet would want. You're fake, you don't want to do nothing. Three hours talking about the Mississippi campaign. Okay. <laughs> 
I wanted him to assume that I'm a person looking to uh, get down with this Mississippi campaign. How, how does one get started with this? Sir? <laughs> Mr. Angel Stumpnup. No. What was the question again? I He still didn't answer the question, sir. He still didn't answer the question. He still, he still didn't answer the question, sir. It's you got a lot of jobs to grow up. Some people bored at you. They won't let them grow up. They keep, no matter how old they get, they keep them. They want to do things for the child. Let your child grow up. Let these black people grow up.
One of the biggest manhunts in New York history ended today with the arrest of the suspect cops believe carried out the subway mass shooting that caused utter terror during rush hour. While making his way to New York, the suspect filmed himself in a rented van, clearly full of anger. Les Trent begins our coverage. They got him. The madman who cops say unleashed havoc on a New York subway train was captured today wandering around Manhattan. The NYPD says tips started pouring in after they released a wanted poster for the suspect, Frank James. A civilian spotted him walking down Canal Street in Lower Manhattan. Another witness saw him at this McDonald's. Police responded to the report that the suspect was inside this McDonald's, but when they got here, he was not inside. They did, however, find him just a few blocks away, and you will not believe what he was doing. Witnesses say the man who allegedly wreaked so much havoc on this city was simply standing right here, charging his phone. I see. I see the guy. We catch the guy, man. The arrest at 1.42 p.m. was captured on video by multiple bystanders. You ought to die. You ought to James is 62 years old, a drifter who posts angry videos on YouTube under the moniker Prophet of Truth. I am driving, I am driving, I am driving. A day-by-day -day timeline is emerging from the video diary. Last month, he was living in Milwaukee when he suddenly packed up and drove to Philadelphia. We're heading back into the danger zone, so to speak. You know, um, it's it's triggering a lot of negative, negative thoughts, of course. From Philadelphia, cops say he rented a U-Haul van and drove to New York. That's the van crossing the Verrazano Bridge in Brooklyn the morning of the subway attack. In this exclusive surveillance video obtained by WCBS, we see a man who looks like Frank James disguised as a construction worker walking to the subway to allegedly carry out the bloody assault. Notice he's carrying a tote and wheeling around a bag that police say contained a hatchet, two gas canisters, a 9mm handgun with three extended magazines, also a stash of fireworks that he bought in Wisconsin. And here's the receipt. He paid $14.99 for a six-pack of smoke bombs. He was talking to himself the whole time. Subway passenger Fachim Jalaschi says he was sitting across from the suspect on the end train when the attack commenced. He was just shooting boom, boom, boom. I was like, whoa, this guy's crazy. He says the man pointed the gun at him and fired twice, leaving bullet holes in his pants. Only by some miracle was he not hit. Oh, I gotta say, I'm lucky to live. That's all I'm gonna say. I got really lucky. Cops say James fired 33 times into the subway car hitting 10 people. The subway station where the mayhem took place is open today, and as you can see, the platform has been scrubbed clean of blood. <laughs> the subway attack has not helped New York City's battered image as the city fights rising crime and the pandemic. Real Housewives of New York's Bethany Frankel says she's fed up with the crime. New York City is not safe. You've got to take the handcuffs off the police, flood the system, do stop and frisk, and return some civility to the subway system. That's our veins and arteries. If you don't, Sean, New York City will never recover. But today, there is relief in the city as the suspect in Tuesday's rush hour nightmare is apprehended. My fellow New Yorkers, we got it. We Good evening, good evening.
How you doing out there in YouTube land? Welcome to this uh, spontaneous simulcast of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I don't want to keep you long. I just wanted to give you a little information and make a comment on this uh, particular story that is about what two or three days old two days old this this is incredible. <clears throat> nothing shocks me, nothing surprised me anymore. In our environment, anything of, of evil, anything of madness, any kind of atrocity, Anything can happen. We should not be shocked about anything. We should not be surprised about anything. This day this day to those who listen to this brother that we know of here on social media, on YouTube. We know him as the prophet of doom. We now know him as the Brooklyn, Brooklyn, New York City subway shooter. Frank James. When I first saw the suspect of this subway shooting in New York, Brooklyn, I thought for sure I knew this person. And then when they mentioned his name, and if you watch this brother's videos over the years, he barely would say his name, but he made reference to his name, and when they said his name, I'm like, I seem like I heard that before. <clears throat> now it's verified that a black YouTuber, a soul brother, a YouTuber, Frank James, a.k.a. Prophet, Prophet of Doom, AAA or simply the prophet of doom. It is verified. It is him, Frank James. He was arrested today and he turned himself in. There was no manhunt. He turned himself in. He would be charged for this, this outrageous act <clears throat> of shooting at least 33 rounds into a crowd of people on the subway in Brooklyn, New York. Wow. Nothing surprises us here. At the Realities Temple on Earth. And actually, had, had it been somebody else, the prophet of doom himself would not be surprised. <clears throat> I don't want to keep you long. I just want to give my two cents upon a man that I have interacted with on YouTube 
for years. This man goes back on YouTube as long as I've been on YouTube, at least 2007 or longer. I think, I think he's a little older than me. I, I believe he said he came to YouTube in late 2005, 2006 or something like that. He's been on YouTube a long time. The prophet of doom. And we have interacted throughout the years. Now, I do not know him personally, but I've had a lot of interaction with him. And really, I view him as a preacher of reality. That's the kind of relationship that we had. We agree on upon so many things. And I call him, and I will refer to him as a preacher of reality. <clears throat> now look. I want to tell y'all something. Some of us, our, our lives have been pretty, pretty, pretty good. Some of us have decent parents. We've never went without a meal, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, drive nice cars. We've lived a pretty decent life. But look at this. I understand that what this brother done was horrendous. Absolutely, Deacon. Too much going on, the pressure, too much going on. The Honorable Brother Minister Malcolm X said, that we have to become a diamond. What creates a diamond? Millions of years of pressure, some kind of pressure. Take a lump of coal. And when you put that lump of coal under pressure, you create a diamond. But at the same time, pressure can also destroy. Here's a man, the prophet of doom, with so much potential. I can tell. His mind is on the right track. He's real, he's on board the soul train. But the pressure, he couldn't handle the pressure. So instead of becoming a diamond, He fell apart. And now we've lost, we've lost a good soldier in reality. Life is hard. The suicide rate in this country, somebody always committing suicide. Whether you're rich or you're poor, regardless of your race, lesbian or gay, it don't make any difference. Suicide is hard or high in this nation because of the pressure. There's no real human connection from one person 
to another. We don't care. There's extreme inequality. People don't get opportunity. Hatred and bias. This is a very stressful environment that we live in. We always under the pressure. It causes you, it causes one to want to take their own life or they make you want to take other people's lives so they can feel the misery and the suffering. And that's what you see in this situation. You see a person who was given or who has had a bad life, living in misery, suffering. I'm going to give you some of what I suffer. So he shoots the gun and blows up fireworks and the people run for their lives. Now you feel, you have a, now you feel how I feel, the pressure. Violence in New York City is at an all time high. The pressure. Do you really think that people want to be criminals? Do you really think that people want to do bad? No, there's the pressure of the society. The pressure. So we can want to send this man to jail and we, we, we send people to the death chamber and it doesn't make any difference. It's not going to stop crime. It's not going to stop anything. It continues to roll because the stress, the pressure, Absolutely. Look at the Will Smith fiasco just a few weeks ago. His whole drama in his life, because he's a public figure, and fall, he fall for the old okie doke because of the pressure. I don't care how strong in the mind you think you are. But if they put you in the right circumstance, anybody can fall victim and go out of your mind because of the pressure. A few years ago, Minister Louis Farrakhan, I'm going to use him as an example because he's good at handling the pressure. But there was a speech that he made where he issued a veiled threat because it was so many people all over the internet, in the newspapers, they was putting the pressure on him. And so he made a veiled threat. If I, you lucky, I love you because basically what he said you lucky I love you. I could have something bad happen to you. Because of the pressure. Trying to, trying to keep all this. See, we're human beings. Will Smith is a human being. We have feelings. Nobody wants to be talked bad about. Nobody, nobody wants to be treated nasty and we fall victim to the pressure i don't have no money look at my clothes look at the car i drive you want to live decent how come i can't live decent how do i do that i don't have any i don't have any skills i i, I don't nobody's helping me i what I, you're a grown man. This is what they tell you. You're a grown man. You should know how to make it on your own. 
how am I going to make it on my own when I live in a society and people hoard all the resources? I can't get nothing. The pressure. You ever seen puppies when they're drinking from the mother and they all the, the puppies pushing each other out the way trying to get to the mother's nipple? That's how we are. Fighting over resources. And in some cases, if you're not strong enough, you'll starve to death. You will die. Because you can't get any substance. And so our jails and our prisons are, are always full. As soon as you release somebody, you got somebody else because of the pressure. Marriage is falling apart. Those other type of shootings used to be popular. Well, I'm not going to say popular, but they used to be, uh, happen a lot. On the job, people getting fired, go back to the job and shoot up the uh, place where they was employed. School shootings. We live in a very stressful environment and society. What is the solution? The solution is God. We've been waiting on God. The solution is let's make a law, take the guns from people. Well, you've taken the guns from the people and the bad guys always get the guns. All these solutions that we're surrounded by, it don't work, but they keep doing the same crap over and over again. What's your solution to handling and dealing with the pressure? I'm going to give you some drugs. Go to the liquor store. Go to the drug dealer. The pressure. So I'm not shocked. And if you... And if you have been listening to this man as long as I have been listening to him, it's not a shock. All these people who have listened to him over the years, some of them might, some of them might be shocked. I'm not shocked. You could see something happening from, from how he talks from the beginning to the present. There's a change because he understands he's under pressure. But I really don't know how the hell I can't get any help. I'm all by myself in the world. So I'm going to punish the world for what it has done to me. One of the first things that I heard from him <clears throat> he always talked about his father. His father was a strict person. His father was not a loving man. Military. He ran his house like a military. He left home at an early age. So that means he was denied the right to be a child. I got to be an adult. I have to be grown at 14, 15 years old. Never had a chance to be a baby, to be a child. Wow. And so he's growing up. I don't remember, I don't remember how much education that he's had or, or whatever. He's growing up during my time, late 60s, early 70s.
and he's in a position you can't get nothing together because you don't have nobody to help you a child you're a young man and you don't know really what to do you're trying to figure this out and then when you finally get something going somebody takes it away from you he always talked about some of his criminal activity because you're trying to eat, you're trying to survive. A lot of people get caught up in criminal activity, not because they're a criminal, because I'm out here, I'm trying to survive, I'm trying to live. So he was talking about this uh, program. He learned how to be a welder. He's a, he's a welder. And they said he had to jump through hoops in order to gain the skills to be a welder. It was always somebody messing with him so he could not be successful. And since that time, he had many, many different kinds of jobs, going from one job to another. Some of us know this. We We've never had a job where we've been on the job 20, 30 years. We always drifting from one job to another. So he experienced a lot of unemployment. Unemployment means you don't have any money. You need money to live in the society. You don't have family. You don't have friends to lean on. The pressure. This man has been living under pressure for 60 years. I think myself that he's been doing a pretty decent job handling the pressure and just now couldn't do it no more because of the anger and the hatred building up, steady building up. Because you are living in a society that takes people, that takes your, that don't give opportunity. So instead of trying, so instead of getting better, things get worse. We're living under extreme pressure. Is this, are you making an excuse for what this man did? No, I'm not making an excuse for nobody. I'm telling you about the pressure because many of us could fall apart tomorrow because we couldn't handle the pressure. We will take ourselves out or we will say, I take some people with me. This is a very stressful society. Look at YouTube. I mean, look at YouTube itself. Very stressful, hateful people, nasty people. If they can't get their way, they want to destroy you. As soon as you tell them you don't have any money, they make mockery. When you're under pressure, you no longer thinking. When you are angry, you don't think no more. You lash out. And many of you, when you get angry, you don't think you lash out. That's why a lot of people end up in trouble. And once they go to jail, they cool down. They think about like, damn, I messed up. When you're angry and under pressure, nobody gives, you're not thinking properly. 
It's emotional. We act like we forget what being a human being is about because we do the same stuff. We kick walls. We kick the dog. Some of us take a brick and throw it at the TV. We do things to lash out. We holler and scream at our mama. So don't act like you don't understand the pressure and what this man been through for 60 years. Not, not for 20 years, not for 20 months, not for 30 days. This man, all of us, we're living in a hellhole of extreme pressure. And when you are under pressure, you can fold. His anger took over. Our brother uh, Talib has uh, joined the platform and I just want to make these uh, just a few more uh, points on this man, this, this brother, because I understand that what he has done is horrible. But I also understand the cause. I also understand the solution that can begin to turn it all around. A solution that religion has failed and all these ideologies and strategies, they have and continue to fail. They don't know how to relieve the pressure because in order to relieve the pressure, you have to give of yourself and you have to, you can't be selfish, but we're selfish and we only think about ourselves. And many of us don't care as long as it don't affect me. But right now you're living in a stressful environment and you got a war in the Ukraine and you think these things won't affect you sooner or later, we will see. Because I guarantee you, if the United States gets involved in Ukraine, and if Russia begins to lose that war, they're gonna turn to nuclear power. That's going to be the beginning and the changing of your and my reality forever. Nuclear war will change our lives, your reality forever. All your, all your religion, all your ideologies, all your strategy, all this crap that we love going to be put to the ultimate test. Let me say these things here quick. Like I said, myself and this brother, we've had a cordial and decent relationship for years. I have posted many of his videos on my channel. I have done that. But as you know, people change through the years. And he began to say certain things I can't get with. One of the things that this brother have a problem with is lesbians. Now, of course, he, he speaks out against the LBGTQ community, however you want to call it. I don't keep up with all that crap, but it was black women who were lesbians. He always blamed for 
losing jobs or making life hard for him. You listen to his video, lesbians, and he talking bad about the lesbians. These old man looking women, black women, these lesbians. He talks about that in his in his videos. So he has a hatred. For, for lesbians. But then he went from the hatred of lesbians, he began to talk like this uh, other YouTuber, David Carroll, he started to talk bad about black women, period. And so we began to separate from each other because I don't do that. You start blaming all your problems and on women. When you know the women are a victim of the society just like you are. You have sick people blaming sick people for their problem when you know and you should understand that you are involved in a society that was sick itself before you was even born. This was already in motion. As soon as we came out of our mother's womb, the pressure start falling on us. We've always been under pressure from the day we was born. And there's nothing your mama or your daddy or grandpa can do about it because they were under the same pressure and have no damn power, can't do a damn thing about it. And then we follow leadership that's incompetent, that will take your money, take your time, take your labor, and give you nothing in return. And the, and the walls of pressure continue to fall on you. It gets worse. And you think that you do better because you have a brand new pair of Jordan shoes. Uh, you're making $60,000 a year now and you're getting comfortable in your oppression. So since you're comfortable in your oppression, you don't understand how did the prophet, do, how did he do that? Why did he do that? Because you're comfortable in yours. If he was comfortable in his, he probably wouldn't went that way. We fall apart in many different ways. A tree can fall down crashing hard. A tree can fall down and you don't hear nothing. Soft. It still fall and it still go down because of the pressure it still fall. So you think you better because you can handle the pressure and don't holler. Some dogs you kick, <laughs> some dogs you kick, they don't say nothing. I know this from personal experience. When I was a bully, I used to bully dogs when I was a child. <laughs> so I know from, from pressure. I also know from my own experience because somebody kicked me in my ass and I didn't <laughs> and I didn't holler. <laughs> I, I hollered in my mind. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> That's what I get for kicking those poor innocent dogs. <laughs> mm. I don't understand why he did that. It happens every day. We live in a very stressful. And even when you listen to the news, they tell you, this is a very stressful lifestyle, especially in the last few years, beginning in 2020, when COVID hit and all this kind of stuff. 2020 will be a year we're never going to forget for a long, long time. And now we're living in 2022 with the possibility 
that a nuclear war might kick off. And some of us who understand that makes our life more stressful. Those who pretend that it can't happen, you at the liquor store, you partying and watching uh, uh, Tiger Woods play. Oh, it's wonderful, Tiger Woods. He come back to play, play, play uh, golf. When America gets hit with the first nuclear bomb, you're going to remember this talk. We're going to see how well you handle the pressure when you have no resources. Where's the water? Where's the food? You can say anything when you're comfortable. When you take the water away, the internet away, the food away, we'll see how well you handle the pressure. Self-righteous as judge other people because unfortunately they couldn't handle it. So we began to, to, to fall apart when this brother started talking about women. I don't do that. Many of you have followed me for years. You know I, I am pro-woman. Does this mean that women don't do anything wacky? That does not mean that. But we should not blame everything. Oh, the women do this. Because it's just as stupid when you say, oh, the men do that. We're all screwed up and messed up. And we've been relying on these things that continue to fail us. Okay. He has always preached to us about doom. That's why he calls himself the prophet of doom. He's always preached to us about doom. And I agree with him a thousand percent that if you don't change the course, not only of black people, but if humanity do not change the course that is on right now, it's doomsday. And so in this country, you have a lot of people, they call themselves doomsday preppers. They understand and trying to get ready for the worst. And the prophet of doom, he began to do the same thing, watching a lot of doomsday prepper videos. And he talked about prepping for doomsday. Or in religion, they might call it the, the war of Armageddon. That's the, the last and ultimate war between good and evil, between God and, and Satan. He talked about the doom. He talked about us trying to go back and live in a more natural lifestyle. We, on this platform, I talk about the same thing, about going back to a more natural way of life. I think that we can have technology and still live a more natural way of life. While the prophet of doom talks about going back to primitive society, hunter and gatherers and all that kind of good stuff. I think and I believe and I know that we should be able because the human being, because of our brain power, we are beyond the primitive way of life. We understand the poison of fossil fuels. We can use our brain. And matter of fact, I've been re reading a uh, science magazine for years. We already have, or they, or the human being, the technology has already been developed for, actually, we they have a science even better than uh, electric cars. Using magnetic propulsion. Have y'all heard of that? Using magnets, using the magnets, the magnets will make a vehicle rise off the ground. Oh, man, 
Check that. Look that up. That's better than than uh, electric uh, vehicles because these electric vehicles. What are you going to do with all these batteries when the cars can't use all these batteries? It's still poison. You're still putting poison into your environment. The human being is we're very smart. We're intelligent. But you have a certain group of us. They benefit from the stress. So they don't want to change nothing. If you benefit from the stress, why would you want to change anything? I like things just the way they are. I don't ride the subway. I don't have to worry about some sucker blowing the subway trains. I don't ride the subway. I ride in a limousine. <laughs> so he talks about back to nature. Now, what really now, what really made us fall out a little bit was this Africa thing, because he says that we are Africans. You know our positions here. And I think I, I probably uploaded the video where he was, really, <laughs> he was really angry at me because I'm telling us that we're not Africans. He was really, really angry at, at me for that. So. We went back and forth. I'm just smiling. I, I don't trip off of that. If you want to be a moose, that's fine with me. I don't, I'm not tripping off of that stuff. You can be a moose. He's very angry. You know, damn well, you are African. Well, uh, no, you can be African. An unspecified African. No relatives. Who in Africa do you know? You don't know nobody in no Africa. You don't have nothing in Africa. They're not giving us nothing. You want to do that? That's your business. Don't get me involved in your stuff. That's do your thizzy. I don't owe Africa nothing. Africa has not done anything for me. I do not care. I care about the people that I'm born from have to take care. We should take care of ourselves and should not depend on. Just because you're related to somebody don't mean they love you. Don't mean they care about you just because you relate. Okay, you're African. So what? What does it mean? What does it mean to be related to Oprah Winfrey? She ain't going to do a damn thing for you. You still got to go and work for Amazon in the morning and make your $17 an hour. You ain't gonna get a damn dime from Oprah. So what? These people have a delusional way of looking at things. I don't, I don't get that. But look, life is hard. And I say this in my conclusion, I'm gonna turn the mic over to uh, our brother, Talib. <clears throat> life is hard. This is a stressful life. This man, 60 years old, and don't have nothing. He's blaming the lesbians. He's blaming the, the crazy ass white people. He's blaming the crazy ass Negro. He don't like you either. Listen to the videos. You don't like black folks because black folks is you stupid. You're living an unnatural life. You're not a full functioning man. There was a video he made. He was fighting the rats in his apartment. He had rat traps all in his apartment. And he was so happy. He said, look, I caught me some rats. So here you are, you 60 some years old. I'm, I'm nothing. I've accomplished, I, have, I have not been able to accomplish nothing in my life. I have nothing. And then I'm, I'm getting sick. You're watching his videos, he's getting sick. He's got some kind of ringing going on in his ears that's messing with his head. Bad health. He's walking down the street drinking hard liquor because of the pressure. Because of the pressure. 
Because of the pressure. Life is hard. But when you're comfortable and you've been made comfortable all your life, three meals a day, good schools, good shoes, got a degree on your wall, it's fine. You act like you don't understand. Self-righteous, pompous. But your day is coming. Because if they drop them bombs, those nuclear bombs, we're going to find out. You're going to find out what pressure is. He's on YouTube, just like me. It's hard work putting these videos up. And you got these bastards on YouTube. You got these old silly ass people flagging your channel. Every time you turn around, wake up in the morning. Sorry, your channel has been terminated. What? Who knows how many? It's the depression. So it got to the point I'm sick. I'm sick of it all. Not only am I mentally sick, but I'm physically sick. The pressure. So now you two, YouTube, you can't flag the videos now, can you, YouTube? He's made national news. Can you flag that? All over YouTube is his face. NBC, Fox, national news, all over the world. And some of you might say, well, he's going to go to jail. Who cares? This man, 60 years old, don't have nothing in bad health, who gives a damn? If you live another five or 10 years, all they gonna do is be suffering. So you go to jail, you get three meals a day, you still get to watch TV or whatever, and live out your life. And, and they, they take care of you for the rest of your life. He's 60 years old, can barely walk and get around in pain. He don't care no more. When you fall victim to the pressure, you don't give a damn no more. He don't go to jail. So what? He's been to jail. He knows what going to jail and prison. He's been there before. So what? Now you're going to take care of me for the rest of my life. I'm a celebrity now. People want to interview you now. Why you do what you did? I'm going to turn the mic over to our brother Talib. Brother Talib, you there? Yes, sir. Um, let me start off uh, and thanks for allowing me on this panel and thanks to those of you that are in the chat listening and those of you that are listening live on YouTube and those of you that will be listening live on YouTube and Facebook when this uh, video is uh, posted. Um, first of all, when I first found out that it was a uh, um that it was this brother whose picture uh the brothers uh posted up so everybody could see. Um at first I said, Oh man, it wasn't too surprising to know that it was a dark skinned person space. Mm -hmm. But however, I was in that situation of where oh it was just another white crazy boy or somebody you know but other than that uh it didn't too much surprise me 
Because, see, we have been conditioned for over 400 years to do, act, and say, or whatever, like the Caucasian has done. So it shouldn't be no surprise. We done been up under these people for over 400 years. What do you expect for us to turn out to be? Mm -hmm. We used to them. We're accustomed to their ways of doing things. So this shouldn't be no shock to anyone. But of course, <clears throat> you know, you got those, you know, who are uh, piggybacking off of what the brothers just said, who are so comfortable in this uh, cesspool filth that they didn't even see that coming. You got them all. You got a lot of people like that in your community. Well, in your neighborhood, because I don't call uh, so people uh, living in neighborhoods a community. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a community. But <clears throat> you got a lot of people walking around in so neighborhoods all over the country under them same type of uh, mental conditions that that led this brother to doing what he did. Now, this is not to be judgmental of the brother because we all have psychological issues. Mm -hmm. Just being descendants of slaves is a psychological issue in itself. Being that we went through what we went through over 400 years going on 500 years is a psychological issue. And then we're living under a stressful situation in a very highly stressful society full of violence, like the brother said in his, um, in, 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 in his, uh, whatever you call that, a uh, manifesto, mm -hmm. you know, this society, like he said, was started on violence mm -hmm. and this society will end in violence. And this is what we're looking at as a product. So this shouldn't be no shock. Now, this is not to condone what he did. I definitely would not suggest that in any type of way, form or fashion, that this is any way to condone what he did. But, however, this is what society creates. This is what the stress from society creates. You got these high ass inflation prices going up steadily. The government ain't trying to do nothing about it or at least rush to do nothing about it. You got the corporations, the rich people with the millions and billions ain't paying their taxes like everybody else that is. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, you got gas prices going up because of this funky ass war with Ukraine and Russia, you know. <laughs> And then you got uh, all this other crazy stuff going on, even to the point where it's affecting the food produce throughout the world. Because uh, a lot of our uh, grain, uh, which uh, some of our grain comes from Russia, and it's affecting the food chain throughout the world. So, you know, when you got all this going on, then you got you dealing with climate change. So when you got all this crazy stuff going on and then you got the injustices going on where, uh, you know, these racist soldiers is constantly getting away with murder. You got these pink Karens getting away with murder. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? What the hell do you expect? <laughs> this is just a, 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 a t ticking time bomb waiting to go off especially when you victimize another people, especially target as, as targeting them as certain groups and this and that, like they're well known for in the society of doing every day. So what do you expect? You know, and, and don't be surprised if more people like uh, Mr. Uh, Frank James, as we know, as his government name now, 
come uh, popping out the woodwoods. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> don't be surprised. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying it's right, but don't be surprised. Because this is the type of time ticking bomb that we're amongst living in this society at this moment. Yes. I mean, you know. And, um, you know, <clears throat> of course, it was the government has even been warned how guns in the society will lead toward, like someone said in reference to this brother when he got arrested today, you know, uh, in another video I was watching where they were saying that um, it's, it's going to become an unlivable situation in this society. And, um, of course, I know that there are some who would disagree and that there are some who would agree. But because of that, you have a lot of people who are repatriating out of America, not just black, but you got whites and, and other different type of people that are leaving America because they was they had the type of... Um, vision like Prophet of Doom had for seeing certain things, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so this is what we're seeing right now in 2020 in America. And um, this is this is the way this is going when you had a country that citizens possess the most guns than any pro probably than anywhere else on the face of the planet, you're going to see way more violence than what you hear about in Honduras and places like El Salvador. You know, and the government has had a chance to, you know, to put gun restrictions down or to implement tougher gun restriction laws. But they're not rushing to because they're benefiting off it. Mm -hmm. Just like they're benefiting off the drugs. You see? So, um, and like someone said, it's steadily nothing being done about this. So, um, as we continue on this uh, roller coaster with nothing being done about this effectively. We're going to see society getting crazy and crazy and crazier. Well, we're going to see situations like this taking place. Like what, what happened at that subway station to them victims in New York City. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, my uh, condolences go out to them as well as their families. Because now they're going to be traumatized by this. But expect more traumatization to come because of the crazier that society is getting. You know, uh, uh, see, see, people are so stooped in a comfortability, black and white, where they're not understanding that it's just not the gangbangers or the criminals out here that you got to worry about. You got to worry about ordinary people walking among you because of a uh, pressure, mm -hmm. like the brother said. Pressure, pressure bus pipes. That's and right. with pressure bus pipes, huh, the average criminal, uh, 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 like uh, some uh, going back to what Denzel Washington said. Even King Kong ain't got shit on this. <laughs> <laughs> You see, so uh, <clears throat> this type of situation, um, <clears throat> and you know, uh, um, this is the reality of what we're living in right now. And we're on the precipice of a possible damn nuclear war. Mm -hmm. You don't think that's enough pressure to worry, a motherfucker? Excuse my French. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, how, how much more evidence 
and warning clearly do you have to be shown to make you snap up out that comfortability zone that you in, especially with the so-called Negro in America. As you know, long as we getting millions of dollars worth NBA NFL contracts, uh, we like Floyd Mayweather making millions of dollars, or, uh, you know, knocking each other's heads off for 12 rounds or whatever, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, getting paid uh, to show our ass on stage. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And all this and at the Super Bowl parties and at the Super Bowl break times and all that. But yet, you ain't seeing all this other stuff going on around us. That's way more bigger than that. Way more bigger than that. Beyond what that could reach. In the totality of this reality that we're living in, see? So now what you're dealing with is people that sleep to the actual reality of what's going on. Now, um, you know, people on drugs or people... That's, uh, like I say, out here doing other stuff, you know, they, 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 they got mental health issues. But like I said, when that pressure from society itself comes down on you and you ain't got no control over the situation at all, what you going to do then? Mm. What you going to do then? Like somebody say, if Russia decide <laughs> to look America's way with that nuclear bomb, what you going to do then? But you still going to be up there smoking your black and mice, <laughs> popping your uh, molly pills, smoking your crack, doing your hair run? You know, drinking your petroleum or whatever the hell the, 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 the liquor drinks they be drinking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you going to be, <laughs> you still going to be partying at the strip club, <laughs> making it rain like you just don't care, you know? <laughs> what you going to do? <laughs> because all that's going to immediately come to an end. All oh, that's going to be immediately come to an end. But of course, see, the Negro America, the so-called Negro American has been mentally designed to think that uh, doodle don't stink. Yeah. One thing we could say about the prophet of doom was he had way half more better sense than millions of y'all niggas got. That's right. <laughs> You can't take that away from me, you know? So, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, um, we must, uh, and, and by the way, uh, yeah, piggybacking off of something else the brother said, what people saying, well, he going to go to jail. What? Again, I'm going to piggyback off of that. That man, what? I'm going on 54. That man probably about eight years older than me. Yep. And lived over half a century in this planet. Got health problems like most of some of us do between 50 and 60 something. Okay. Exactly. So uh, <laughs> who gives a damn? <laughs> like somebody say, who gives a damn about him going to jail? And plus he'd have been to jail, the penitentiary, all that. So what? He, 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 he understands what's going on with that. He ain't worried about that. Matter of fact, he ain't got to worry about no responsibilities, which comes along with crazy ass stress. He ain't going to have to worry about that for the rest of his life. All he could just do is live out however long he got left with the health problems he had. He could uh, comfortably live that out in jail. Exactly. <laughs> While we still out here struggling. <laughs> right. Because let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. 
and, and, and don't and don't get it twisted. Don't get the situation twisted like I'm trying to encourage people to go to jail and all that mm-hmm. dumb stuff. What I'm saying is, is that what we going through out here is way more stressful than what they going through in there. Because they got people taking care of them. Yeah. They ain't got to worry about paying rent, gas, water bills, high ass pricey food bills, <laughs> mm-hmm. car notes. <laughs> they ain't got to worry about all that because everything is taken care of them by the DOC or whatever prison system they in. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So uh, 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 um, they don't have to worry about half the stuff that we got to deal with. Or we are we going to be without a place to stay if we don't keep a job or we can't pay our rent for the next mm-hmm. month. We're going to be out in the cold or somewhere sleeping under the hot sun under a, a bridge with mosquitoes flying everywhere. You see what I'm saying? Uh, you, you, you know, we ain't got the, you, you know, they ain't got to worry about that type of stuff. Nope. Yeah, it could be stressful being in a situation like that, but don't. It's nothing compared like out here. Trust me. They ain't got. They ain't got. To, there's a lot of stuff they ain't got to deal with. That's, right. That's one thing that people incarcerated got going for them. And uh, I say this because the reality is. And especially in a society like this, you know, I remember one time someone told me years ago, matter of fact, when I was uh, in, incarcerated, they told me some years ago that uh, the Cubans that that uh, fled uh, from under Castro's Cuban uh, regime to come to America, a lot of them are still detained to this day in detention facilities across the country. And uh, they say that those people, basically, even the ones that committed crimes in America and got incarcerated, they more happy to be in jail or in some type of form of incarceration in America than they were in so-called outside society in Cuba. Mm -hmm. So just picture this. Just think about America getting more worse and worse where even in outside society it's going to be unbearable to live. You got to look over your shoulders every day. Mm -hmm. You already see how worse it's getting where people can't even let their children go out in the front yard and play no more without worrying about gunshots coming from whichever way they coming from. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or worrying about, uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, If somebody going to blow them away while they sitting in a rocking chair on their front porch, you see what I'm saying? Just enjoying the nice day out in front of their house or their apartment building. You know what I'm saying? This, This is real. And, and, and of course, be, bullets don't have no, uh, oh, that man ain't got nothing to do with it. That woman ain't got nothing to do with it. That child ain't got nothing to do with it. If you in the way, you just getting hit. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So uh, <clears throat> this is the type of situation that we're in today. And you must understand and realize this. This is no game. You see, the police don't give a damn. You know, it's becoming to a point where, like people were saying years ago, this may become, we are in a situation where we're seeing lawlessness going on. Mm. They just got done saying in the video how Cops in Atlanta, Georgia, got a down point system of a tar- of targeting certain people, especially like juveniles, that help them get up their point systems. I guess to get them uh, more pay or whatever. You know what I'm saying? More bonus pay. And they are, I guess, the only metropolitan uh, police department in the country that do that because they say other police departments and metropolitan areas don't. 
do that type of stuff. But what I'm what, but the point is, is that they said that when they supposed to really be uh, responding to other nine one one calls, they sitting in the cut waiting to see if they could catch somebody speeding so they could give them a ticket. Where they ignore that nine one one call. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So this is the type of society that we're living in. Where you with sitting in the cut waiting on somebody or to pull up on and stop somebody on some frivolous bull crap where you were supposed to answer the 911 call where somebody just got popped or killed. You see what I'm saying? You ignore that. So you just allowed another murdered suspect to get away. When you stopping somebody on a funky traffic violation, you see what I'm saying? These people don't care nothing about solving no crimes, no real crimes. That that's that's just the reality of it. But yet, we comfortable living in this type of situation. Mm -hmm. Do you ever ever think about when you talk about the immigrants or come the here come these crazy Mexicans or El Salvadorians coming from uh, Central America, South America? Do you ever imagine what they're going through in the countries they're coming from? Hmm. That's just like the Canadians saying, oh, here come these crazy Americans trying to, uh, you know, get in our country. You see what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, you, 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 you know, you ever, you ever think about that? This is what we're looking at as a society. So, um, and because we, as uh, dark skinned descendants of slaves born in America, ain't really trying to come together to do nothing about our situation to, to, to maintain any type of control of our situation or condition or uh, as a group in this country, uh, this is what's going to continue to happen. And, and um, you know, um, I just just heard right before I came on live where a model, a Karen, a pink Karen model down in Miami married, murdered her black boyfriend, allegedly stabbed him to death in a domestic altercation and still haven't officially been charged with murder. Yes. Still officially haven't been charged with murder. And she out on bond. Ain't that crazy? But she ain't officially been charged with murder. So they don't give a damn about you. Mm -hmm. See? So this is the thing. Uh, people, we have to understand and wake up. And realize that we are, in fact, an endangered species. As the so-called pro-black conscious community used to put it, you know, we are an endangered species. Mm -hmm. And and um, I mean, with this brother, not to get way far off the topic, of course, but what this brother did, like I said, is uh is 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 is, is very damning and and uh you know, like I said, I uh, send my uh, condolences to the victims and even their families. And I also am glad that those victims so far have survived this without any deaths being reported from this situation. But I must say that, um, you know, uh, it's, it's just, you, you know, I feel for the kids being born in this world at this period of time. I feel for them. I have a, a young relative. I think she's two or three now. Still happy go lucky. Don't got a care in the world. Don't yep. know what's going on around her. And every time I message my cousin and his daughter playing, you know, on they on her little toy slide in their apartment and everything. I, I mean, they house, and I'm looking at her, and I'm like, 
this innocent child don't even know where she's been brought into. Mm -mm -mm. You know, of course, I can't tell the parent that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, hey, <laughs> it is what it is, like somebody say, you know? <laughs> and, 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 uh, I mean, uh, you know, um, I really feel sorry for the generation that's born in this time. I, I, I really am. I feel real sorry for them because they didn't ask to come into this type of situation. And uh, before I get tongue tied and with that said, uh, I'm definitely uh, going to pass the mic back to our number one soul brother, Andrew Snup Snup Seven. And uh, peace to everyone in the audience listening. All righty then. That was uh, <clears throat> so, Brother Talib. Thank you, Brother, for joining me tonight, and so that we can talk about this uh, this this incident and this unfortunate. Uh, thing that happened with the, the prophet of doom. I don't wish bad on, on anyone. I want to say in my closing, and I want to be quite honest with you, <clears throat> I just talked about myself and, and the cancer thing and whatever. I'm going to tell you quite honest, I've, I've had those type of thoughts myself. Because jail and prison don't scare me. Death don't scare me. And since I'm sick, I'm old and I'm sick anyway. I'll be having these thoughts. And I I, I don't, and I hope that I, I don't act on it. But, you know, when your mind start going and you, you get angry and get upset and whatever, you don't know what you might do. I don't think this brother, I, I don't think he, he, he planned this. It was just something. I mean, you can't take the pressure. Things get on your nerve and people break down. They they snap. It's a thing called temporary insanity. But I know I get these feelings. I'm old and I'm sick. And there's some people that need to be, I'm not going to go there because you can guess where I'm going. I'm not even going to go there. You know, you bastards. <clears throat> but I will. I will also bear witness to what Talib said <clears throat> that uh, at this stage in my life, you know, prison, jail, don't bother nobody. You get three meals a day and people talk, you're going to go back to the crazy house. How is that going to hurt me? Three meals a day, I don't have to be bothered with nothing. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you right now. I suffer more stress being here with y'all sane folks than I did when I was in the middle institution. I had very little stress when I was locked up where I was at. The only thing that made me upset because I couldn't go nowhere. I couldn't do too much of nothing. And actually when I got privileges, I was able to go out in the world and shop and do some certain things and have a job. I'm like, it was, it was gravy. It's cool. But this free world that y'all brag about and, and whatever, it's very stressful. Hateful people, greedy, selfish, arrogant, nasty, vile, profane, vulgar, freaks. Say anything, do anything. I'd rather go back to the crazy house than be with in the real crazy house. This is the real crazy house. And you're not being monitored. You're crazy as hell. And there's nobody to monitor you, nobody to give you your medication. Say anything, do anything, stealing from each other, slandering gossip. But that's the crazy house. I was locked up in the crazy house. That's a bad place. You didn't really hear people slandering folks in the crazy house. 
gossip. There was a fight now and then. No, this is the madness. This is the crazy. Folks run around here telling us about their invisible God. Well, God is gonna, God gonna do this, you know, they're invisible, telling these damn lies every day. The house of God. God ain't did a damn thing. You built that. God didn't do nothing. Then they go crazy and want to kill you. Oh, but that's the crazy house. But you want to kill somebody because they don't believe in your punk ass God. They don't do <laughs> I really have to hold myself back dealing with people and this God stuff and some of this Pan-African pro-black. It's all bull. It's all bull crap. It makes me sick to the stomach. You don't talk to me like this stuff is real. Black man is God. You ain't no God. You don't have no power. Black man is a king. You don't rule a damn thing. How long we gonna keep doing this dumb ass stuff? And like you said, Brother Talib, the prophet of doom was on point. Majority of the time, he was on point about a lot of things he, he was saying. He was very, very real. And these folks here don't have a clue. But with that said, before I really start getting pissed off, because I might have to do, do my talk on Rumble, because I know I, the way I really want to go off on certain things, I can't do that on YouTube. <laughs> I can't go on YouTube. Yeah. But I, I have to watch myself and talk to some of these people. I try to respect people, but don't bring me that religious stuff. I let you know that it's garbage. Don't keep bringing that stuff to me, telling me about your God and black people living in some type of utopia. Africans is holy and righteous. You're a damn lie. Africans have never been holy and righteous. And yes, black folks are victims. There's no doubt about it. You know, Africans, we're victims. You know, melanated people are victims. But don't tell this lie. Just because you're a victim don't mean that you're holier, holier than thou. Because you wasn't. These Africans and all these other people, especially in these patriarchal societies, they were creating wars. They was raping. They was murdering. They was living no holy and righteous life. They'll, they'll cut your head off and be spiritual tomorrow. Matter of fact, cut your head off and put your head on a pole and pray over it. <laughs> Spirituality. With that said, I... I it's sad. I, I wish this didn't happen. This brother didn't go that way. But again, we live in a society of pressure, and you you think you think that you know what you you will you will and will not do. You don't know that. You do not know, and you don't know what might happen to you tomorrow. Oh, I can't go to jail. It's a damn lie. You can easily get caught up and trapped and end up in jail or prison, or raped or murdered. You can't tell nobody what's what what's going to happen to you. We don't know what might happen. We don't know when we're going to die. But, you know, when you're living in these fantasy worlds and, you know, uh, some of these fantasy worlds is organized like religion and, and whatever. And some of this stuff we just make up in our own mind. Some of us think we can't die because we live so long. You think you can't die. Oh, you going. Oh, you going. It's going to happen. But you won't be around to tell us about it. That brother was a good man. He had, he had a good heart. From, from my interaction with him, even though we disagreed, he's a good man, a good heart. And he cared more about than just black people. He was worried about humanity, period. Somewhere, because of his own personal problems and how life has treated him, he just snapped, fell apart. And unfortunately, we have to suffer the consequences of our action. And going to prison is not going to be a piece of cake. But nobody's going to want his old booty. <laughs> nobody's going to want his old booty. 
They might. I really doubt it. <laughs> He's just going to go there and, and watch a little TV, play chess or whatever and until time takes him away. I want y'all to stay safe too and uh, have a peaceful night. Did you want to say something before we close, uh, Brother Talib? Uh, yes, brother. Uh, I, I just want to say that, um, you know, I really, um, like I said, I hate, I hate how the situation went down all together, but this is the reality of what we're, or what we're at in this society and world. And, uh, you know, we, we have to understand that, uh, we cannot be prejudgmental of yeah. people because we all have a crazy side to us that if it's activated, especially like someone say, according to pressure, <laughs> we could go in the same similar direction or by the fact we could even kill ourselves. Yeah. How about that? You know? So, uh, I mean, uh, you know, I just feel like, um, at this point in time, I mean, I just want to also say, too, in closing, that just think about the woman in the state of Oklahoma, what they got to go through if they don't want to have a baby that's mm. that they've been impregnated with. They just signed the bill yesterday in the state of Oklahoma, almost outlawing abortion yeah. altogether. So uh, just think about how they feel how much control they've lost over their own bodies. That's enough for pressure to drive you insane. Yeah. Especially, when you, you, you know, so, uh, I mean, you know, uh, just just think about that, you know, and, 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 and uh, just think about as we look around and see the everyday situations going on in this society and how this is changing our reality right before our eyes when a lot of us can't even still see it because we're so caught up in our own uh, bubble our own false or fake reality you know mm -hmm. so um and especially when you're talking about comfort zone you know and and stuff not realizing that hey you know these races could actually put us back in slavery. That's right. <laughs> I mean, you know, but yeah, you say, oh, we, we, we living in way more better advanced times. They can't do that. Well, uh, you know, keep thinking that. I, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, I'm tired of even talking about that because, you know, yeah. you talking to most of these uh, Negroes, you know, it's like you talking to a brick wall. It's like really talking to a brick wall. So, you know, um, keep doing what you're doing. Keep busting out your champagne or your petroleum and smoking your weed and your crack and doing your heroin and, you know, and, or, or smoking your hokas. Now you didn't you didn't got got on to something the Arabs been doing for a long time. Smoking hokas, <laughs> you know, do that too. you know, keep doing what you do. And, and and just just see that uh it ain't gonna lead you nowhere but to nowhere. <laughs> and, and and um you know as of course you know this brother is gonna face his consequences. But like someone said, he's already lived over a century. Yeah. What the hell he care? You know, and 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 and, uh, and even a lot of people that's even way younger. You know, I hear people saying, "Well, people was too young to throw their lives away." Think about the pressures yeah. in outside, unquote, free society that led them to doing what they did. And I'm not saying it's an excuse, but it is what it is. Just think about it. You know. And, 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 and um, I mean, it's like um, we 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 talk about how these young people out here doing what they do. Well, and, 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 and doing so much crazy stuff where they don't let alone do they not care about going to jail. They don't care about dying. 
Right. You know, and, and plus a lot of them out here saying, well, you know, it's better us to be better off dead, if not in jail anyway, because we ain't got to keep dealing with this craziness. Yes. Because this is pure D hell on earth that we're living in. We ain't got to die to uh, find out we, we live in the reality of this right now. See, and that's what most of you don't understand. Just like Elijah Muhammad once said, uh, hell in heaven uh, is a condition of life. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> this is what we're living. We're living that condition of life right here on earth as we walk and talking and breathing. We ain't got to go uh, six feet under to find out exactly. about it. <laughs> you know, so uh, with that said, uh, I'm going to pass the mic back and uh, I'm going to also buy a lot of here after the brother conclude the video. And so uh, peace to everyone. And to those of you who also be watching it once it's posted on YouTube and Facebook and peace to everyone in the chat section and peace to the whole uh Deacons of a reality family and ev and everyone else in the chat that's listening. And uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, lean back and uh, let the brother take us out of here. And once again, peace, everyone. And on that note, we are out of here, just like our ancestor, Don Cornelius, used to always say as in parting, we wish you love. Peace and so, so, so we are Audi 5000.